I grew up in a town called Braintree in Essex, and I was just an ordinary kid. I was average at school, average at sport, but I loved one thing. I loved swimming, and I would go swimming as often as possible. Hot or cold, rain or shine, you couldn't keep me out of the swimming pool. And one day, when I was seven, my mum just completely out of the blue just said to me, you like swimming, why don't you join the swimming club? I thought, what a great idea, why don't I join the swimming club? And so I did, and very quickly, I had dreams of going to the Olympics. And one day I got home from a training session, I sat my mum and dad down on the sofa and I said, I'm going to go to the Olympics and I'm going to win a gold medal. But then at the age of 13, just as I was breaking out onto the national scene, racing kids, the best kids in the country, of the same age as me, I fell over at school and snapped my arm, just below the shoulder, my right arm. I was rushed to the local casualty unit and uh, on the x-ray showed a clean break and a fuzzy patch around the break and uh, no one really seems to be paying much attention to the fuzzy patch. But one day I was, after being there a couple of days just recuperating, one of the junior doctors that I got on very well with, just as he was leaving the room, he said, oh, and of course, you know you've got to go to, have Lon to London to have some tests. Hold on a minute. If your local hospital can't fix a broken arm, there's probably something a little bit more wrong with you than just a broken arm. And when I got to that London hospital, that's where they told me I had cancer. It was I had to have chemotherapy, so all my hair fell out. But I also had to have a prosthesis a metal prosthesis put in to replace this bone, which ironically is called the humerus. <laughs> and part of that meant that I was going to lose all of this kind of range of motion in my right shoulder. Now, if you're a swimmer, that's a nightmare. I got through the chemotherapy, had the operation, still managed to keep my arm, perhaps more importantly, still managed to keep my life, and I started swimming again but this time just swimming with one arm. Now, I was really swimming just to stay in contact with the friends that I had at the swimming club, just the social side, but I was swimming with one arm. But my swimming coach also, one of the things that he said was that if you want to swim in this swimming group, you have to enter competitions. You can't be in the swimming group and not enter competitions. He taught me one key thing about teamwork. And that is that if you've got a team without everyone moving in the same direction, then you haven't got any team cohesion. And that's why he wanted us to all be after the same thing, to continually improve. So I'd enter competitions, but obviously I would get completely thrashed because I was swimming with one arm and all the other kids were swimming with two. That's not funny. <laughs> Who laughed at that? Um, all the other kids were swimming with two. but. All those Olympic dreams had long gone out the window until one day I was at a swimming meet in East London and there was a woman there from the Paralympic swimming team and she said, we're having a training weekend up in Darlington, why don't you come up to Darlington and try out, see how you get on, see how you feel about the Paralympics. What teenager wouldn't want to go away to a hotel and just mess around with a load of other teenagers for a weekend? So I thought, sure, got to train up there walked into a ballroom full of disabled people. You think about the last time you saw a disabled person on the street, probably saw one. You might have seen two, but I guarantee you, you didn't see three, and you certainly didn't see a room full of 70. And I walked in and I thought, I've got a disability. I've got to face up to the fact that I now have a disability. I also had to face up, did, oh, going to the Paralympics, how does that answer the, the original dream of going to the Olympics? Are the two the same? Are they equal? How does that work? And on the train on the way home, I really didn't think they were. And I wasn't interested in the Paralympics. And it was only until I met a very eminent swimming coach who told me this. He said, before you were ill, you could do 10,000 things. 10,000. So now you can do 
9,000 things. So you've got a choice. You can concentrate on the 1,000 things that you can't do anymore, or you can concentrate on the 9,000 things that you can still do. And that was the spark. That's what got me thinking that I needed to reassess my life, that I needed to change, I needed to move forward, and I needed to go to the Paralympics and fulfill that dream. Now to the men's 100 metres butterfly. This is the final for S8 swimmers. And there's the lineup for you. Larsen, Kimmich, Austin, Giles Long of Great Britain, Blondum of Denmark, Munoz of Spain, Schwalieber of Slovakia, and Jakobsen of Denmark. This is for swimmers with uh, full use of arms and trunks, with some leg function, or swimmers with the use of one arm only, or some limb loss. Should be a good race, this. Two lengths of the pool, and uh, Giles Long defends the title he won in 1996. Well, he's certainly got off very quickly, and he leads from Rondim of Denmark. And uh, Britain is certainly leading this field at the moment, and uh, looks to me to be moving away. But Blondum of Denmark putting a bit of pressure on, on the near side. And look at this, he's maintaining his advantage. A terrific swim, he's the champion again. And Blondum of Denmark gets silver, Austin gets the bronze, and the world record has gone. A brilliant swim. How many miles must you have swam each and every week to reach such a high level? Enough to win. Enough to win. I managed to come home with one of these. <laughs> Is it gave me the key to open a new door to thinking about myself in a different way to being able to understand when someone is trying to inspire me, to being able to understand that if you don't change and continue to improve yourself, you're in fact moving backwards, and the ability to understand that we're all part of many, team, many more teams than we realise, that those teams affect us in many more ways than we realise, and that everyone is a leader of at least one team. Thank you very much.